we'd like to ask you a bit about, about consistency. How consistent should prosecutors' decisions be? And what kind of con consistency should we look for? Consistency in outcomes or consistency in the procedures um, or the factors that they use to come to those decisions? Yeah, I think it's the latter. Consistency in and of itself is not necessarily a good thing. If an office is <coughs> treating everyone similarly unfairly or factoring into their decisions certain kinds of considerations which should be improper and not be considered in, but they're using those against all defendants. That is not a good thing, even though it <coughs> yields consistency. Consistency in terms of the principles that are applied in the sentencing process and having a consistent process, I think that is a good thing and a very important thing and a very difficult thing to achieve. Mm -hmm. In the prosecution offices that we studied, um, right, their, their interest in consistency stretched from initial screening through plea bargaining through the final sentence recommendation. And, and they went about uh, ensuring consistency in several different ways. Um, they organized their prosecutors into small units and had one supervisor over that small unit, which could ensure consistency among a small group of individuals who all handled similar cases. Um, they used round tabling of cases in which prosecutors would come together uh, and talk about their recommended plea offer, the charges they were thinking about. Um, uh, charging in a particular case, and, and they would justify their, their decisions to the rest of the group who would comment on it. And they also relied on mentoring, where uh, younger prosecutors, newer prosecutors, would sh shadow another prosecutor and, and learn from them the informal norms of the office. And by that, right, they would try to ensure at least some consistency in philosophy and approach. Do you uh, think these are, 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 are Ways are good ways for the prosecution's office, prosecutor's office to try to uh, get consistency, appropriate ways? Are there more beneficial strategies that, that could work? I think it can be a way of sentencing, of, I'm sorry, of, um, sensitizing individuals about their own decision making process. Because the kind of thing that we talk about, and I think we're all concerned here about disparity, particularly amongst various races and social class, and, and um, Class has now become a proxy for race in many communities and, and caste. To the extent the prosecutor is focusing on something which might reveal itself in having a disparate racial impact, the prosecutor is probably not even aware of that. Uh, those kinds of discussions might sensitize the individual prosecutor to the fact that what he or she uh, is doing might yield a racist result, even though it's certainly not motivated by any kind of racism, evil intent, or anything else, it's probably driven by nothing more than the prosecutor trying to do his or her job in a conscientious manner and make the best possible decision to achieve what he or she would define as a just result. Mm -hmm. In both of, the, both of the offices where we worked, we had pro some prosecutors who argued that inconsistency in outcomes was actually a good thing. It indicated that prosecutors were thinking broadly about a case outside of simply, can I prove this case? They were thinking about, well, should I prove this case? And when they did that, they, they argued that it allowed, pro that prosecutors were thinking about the impact of their decision on the defendant, their impact of the decision on the victim, the impact of their decision on the community. And those were good things to think about. And that would in introduce some inconsistency in outcomes, but, but that was acceptable to them. So I'm wondering, do you, do you think that's an acceptable approach, right? The, the idea that inconsistency is, is, is not only a good thing, it should be, it's not only something acceptable, but it's something we should value. And if so, what kind of factors do we want prosecutors to be thinking about that would lead to those differential outcomes? That's a good, very good question. I would agree with it. I think inconsistency is potentially a very good thing. I'll put it that way. And the reason I qualify that is because it, de it depends on what's driving the inconsistency. To the extent that it's being driven by individualized considerations of fairness mm -hmm. and is devoid of the kinds of bias that I think we're all, or most people are concerned about creeping into discretionary outcomes, then it's a good thing. To the extent that the <coughs> kid who's from the upper white uh, middle class family uh, with two parents, to the extent that he is told, go on home or I'm gonna tell your parents you're out here, mm -hmm. and the uh, be black or white or Latino kid from a lower economic uh, income with no dad at home is told, okay, get in the back of the car, you're coming with me. <clears throat> Just because of who they are, what they look like, and the extent that the prosecutor can identify or not identify with them, or perhaps even fear them, that's a very, very bad inconsistent uh, inconsistency. 
to the extent that it's driven by consideration of what defendant X having a serious drug problem that needs treatment, and that if we deal with the underlying problem of the drug addiction, he'll probably stop, she'll probably stop the antisocial behavior, and defendant Y not having any kind of readily identifiable reason for mm -hmm. antisocial behavior other than just a, being on a power trip um, uh, out in the streets and flexing the muscles. And to me, those are two very different kinds of situations that require a different uh, response and a different sanction, possibly. That inconsistency would be very good, even if the kids looked like, them, like one another or if they, if they appear to be very different um, in terms of the demographic. The inconsistency there is good. The problem with how do you keep that inconsistency within appropriate limits, and I think the kind of thing that you've suggested some officers doing with roundtable discussions, having uh, prosecutors defend their decisions, is a way to begin to get at some kind of parameter to make sure that the inconsistency results in individualized fairness mm -hmm. rather than some sort of discretionary um, bias creeping into the prosecutorial decision making. Thank you so much, Judge McKee. This has been fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it. You.